Welcome to Goodfellow Television, TTVT. Our studio is located in Building 519, Room 103. Our primary mission is to help you, the instructor, produce a training aid for use in your classroom. This briefing is to show you what is necessary to produce a training aid from accomplishing the required forms to receiving the final product. Television has always been a medium for information and entertainment. It has evolved into an important tool for research and development, as well as a very useful instructional and learning vehicle. As with all Air Force business, there is a certain amount of paperwork to be accomplished. When you decide on your subject matter, you will need to fill out an Air Force Form 411. The most important sections of this form are Blocks 29 and 38. Block 29 is where your division chief must sign authorizing the production to be done. Block 38 must be signed by the technical advisor assigned to the production. The technical advisor will act as the subject matter expert for the production and is required to work with the director throughout the entire production. It is also the job of the technical advisor to ensure that the script is technically and grammatically correct. After the Air Force Form 411 has been completed and approved by the audiovisual manager, we will do a title search to see if there is an existing audiovisual product in the DOD system that may fulfill your requirements. If there is not an existing product that you can use, we begin the production process. To begin the production process, you will need the basic idea and information necessary for the production you have in mind. Once you have a rough idea of what you might need, the next step will be to come down and talk to us about your production. You will be given a short briefing on what we can do to enhance your training tape, what requirements there will be for the technical advisor, and what parameters the director has to work with. After the groundwork has been laid for getting the pre-production work done, it is time to write the script. The script should be a step-by-step -step progression in narration form or how you want to present the information in your production. This will take coordination between the technical advisor and the director. Once the technical advisor has approved the script, he will then sign the TTVT form letter number five, which verifies the written content and the correctness of it. When script completion is done, a storyboard for the entire script is made. A storyboard is a rough sketch of the video that covers or goes along with the narration. When the entire script has been compiled, it will look like this. Once the storyboard has been completed and approved by the technical advisor, the TTVT form letter number five must be signed again, approving all video information to be used in the production. The next step is to select the different forms of video that are to be used in the production. As an example, you may want to use slides, graphics and videotaped materials, or possibly view graphs. If slides or graphs are desired for your production, an Air Force Form 833, a request for audiovisual services, will have to be filled out and given to either the photo lab or the graphics shop. Completion of graphics will generally take about three to four weeks, depending on the amount and detail required. Photo requirements take from two to three weeks, once again, depending on the amount and the locations required. Upon receiving all video material, we will double check the video against the storyboarded script to make sure we have met all your requirements. When this has been done, we are ready to schedule studio time, personnel, equipment, and facilities. With the preliminary work finished, it is time to select the talent for the production. It is required that the talent sit down with the technical advisor and the director to ensure that the proper points are emphasized and that the talent has an understanding of what is required of him or her on and off mic. In most cases, a talent from television operations will be used. However, if a talent is used from a different organization on base, approval must be made by the NCOIC of the television branch. At the same time the talent is chosen, a production crew will be assigned by the director. The crew will be the same throughout the production. We do this because it facilitates a smoother run operation and in the end a better product. 
Lighting the studio set then becomes our next major job. It takes anywhere from a few hours to a full day to light the studio set. The time involved directly relates to the complexity of the set and any and all movements that might be made. Lighting will involve camera angles, set design, intensity of the lights, saturation of the clothing involved, and other items unique to television operations. When lighting is complete, we will block the whole program. By blocking, we mean checking the camera and talent positions to ensure we will be able to shoot what the script calls for. This means a run-through of the program for the director, camera operators, audio technicians, maintenance technician, and the videotape machine operator. Now that the script is ready, all your extra video, slides, graphics, pre-recorded video, have been prepared, the crew selected, and the set is lit, we are ready for rehearsal. Rehearsal is required to be sure that the studio lighting is correct, all the cues that will be used are understood between the talent and the crew, and also to be sure that camera angles that were chosen will work. Rehearsal also gives your director time to mark his cues on the script for camera movements. Rehearsal also gives us the time to be sure that all the equipment is working correctly. It would be a tremendous waste of your time and ours if we had to stop and readjust lights during a production, or if the director had to stop production to explain procedures. Remember, the whole idea is preparation. The better prepared we are, the smoother the production will go. Although the director is in charge of the production, his control in the studio is relayed to the floor manager. The floor manager will ensure all the necessary equipment in the studio operates correctly. This means lights, cameras, microphones, teleprompters, and headsets. This also includes being sure that all your props are set up correctly. The floor manager will also brief you on the use of the teleprompter and the cues that will be given during the production. Although the talent should make sure he or she are in compliance with Air Force Regulation 3510, it is the responsibility of the floor manager to make sure that this regulation is complied with before the talent goes on camera. The floor manager is your eyes and ears to the director. Working alongside the floor manager in the studio are the camera operators. Although they are responsible for picture framing, composition, and camera movements, they also monitor what is going on in the studio. If, for example, a light goes out in the studio, the camera operator would assist the floor manager in getting the light replaced so the production can proceed. Camera operators also assist with studio sets, changing graphics, or operate the light dimmers. While you are in the studio, the director will be here in the control room. He is responsible for transforming your script into video and video images. He will give commands to start the tape recorders, bring up the cameras, and also tell the floor manager when to cue the talent. The director watches these monitors to be sure the picture content and quality is technically correct. The director has overall control on everything that goes on during the production. Television audio, the sound accompanying the pictures, is a major part of the production. Generally, television sound is hard to achieve. Owing to the varying distances from moving sound sources to microphones in outdoor locations and the inevitable studio noise during the production. Your audio is fed through the microphone to this audio board, where it is controlled at the correct level. Before the actual production is started, the audio person, through the floor manager, will ask to get an audio level. As you read your script, your audio level will be adjusted accordingly. While the program is being recorded, the video levels must be adjusted to be sure that the video is not distorted. This is the video engineer's position. By adjusting these camera control units and watching these scopes, the video engineer can ensure that what is being recorded is of good quality. If there's a problem, the engineer can notify the director and steps can be taken to correct the problem. The final leg in the recording process is accomplished here in the videotape machines. The machine operator starts and stops these machines at the direction of the director. He also keeps a log of the recording. This log will contain the stop and start times of the different segments and a note as to whether the segment is usable or not. 
This video log is very important to the director, as it will tell him where everything is on the tape, which will help when it's time to start editing. So far, we've taken you through the pre-production phase, going from the original idea to the studio. And we've also given you a glimpse into what happens during a production. Now, let's take a look at some equipment and how it can be used during studio production or editing to enhance your video production. First, we'll turn our attention to the studio cameras. They are state-of-the-art equipment and can be used in the studio or brought to you to record your program in the classroom. One feature of these cameras is that they can be used in low-light situations, like your classroom or even the inside of an aircraft. We would have to use some supplemental lighting, but you wouldn't have to deal with the larger lights normally used in the studio. These cameras can also be used where 110 voltage power is not available. All we do is strap on a battery belt, connect the camera to a portable video recorder, and we are ready to record your program wherever you want. The most outstanding feature of the camera is the camera lens. This lens has the capability to shoot macro, which enables you to see the finest detail of a printed circuit board, or to point out a specific place on a map. Since the camera represents the audience, you must look directly into the lens whenever you intend to establish eye contact with your viewers. To help establish this eye contact, we have this equipment, which is called the teleprompter. Your script will be typed on a regular typewriter. After the typing is finished, it is placed on the transport table, which pulls the paper from one roller to another at a speed that is adjustable to your reading pace. This camera scans, enlarges, and displays the print on this monitor, which is attached to the front of the camera. The copy is then reflected onto a glass plate directly in front of the camera lens. The camera can still see you because the camera is looking through the back side of the glass, and the letters are reflected onto the front of the glass. The advantage to using this system is that you are able to maintain eye contact with your audience. From the studio to the control room, we'll now take a look at the switcher. This piece of equipment controls all video sequences in your production. The switcher consists of several rows of push buttons that allow you to select pictures from a number of inputs, such as cameras, film, slide, or videotape, and assemble them. Another electronic device that we use in our studio is called the character generator. This device can create letters and numbers in a variety of sizes and designs. To prepare the material, we type the needed titles on a keyboard, and the information is stored on a disk. The information then is recalled from the switcher and keyed like any other effect. With our character generator, you can use three or more letter styles and sizes. The lettering can be rolled on the screen bottom to top, or crawled across the screen right to left. This also can be done at eight different speeds. You can have color on a full row, partial row, or the full page. Also available are color characters, outline, see-through, and black. Or you can have different style bar graphs. So far, we have looked at pre-production, given you a look at what happens during a production and how the equipment operates. Now, let's look at how the final product comes together during editing. Videotape editing ranges all the way from a simple hooking together of several long scenes that have been recorded in their natural sequence, the opening first, then the scenes as they occur, and the closing in a multi-camera studio production, to the complex building of a show from many out-of-sequence shots obtained with a single camera from other video sources such as slides and film and several independent audio tracks. All videotape editing is done by means of electronic editing. This way, you can insert new video and audio information into an existing videotape recording, 
or add various pieces of video or audio information in a desired sequence, all without cutting the tape. An electronic editor seeks out the sync pulses on the control track at the exact point of transition. The electronic editor permits the simultaneous editing of video and audio, or of either track, audio or video, separately without affecting the other. The electronic editor that we use is the Sony BVU-800 editing system. This system is one of the most sophisticated systems used in the industry today. Remember the videotape operator? He kept a log of the scenes that were recorded and which scenes were usable. Your director will use this log to locate all of the scenes that are required to edit your program together. He will be able to search for each scene frame by frame or up to 10 times the normal speed and see the image at the same time, in forward or reverse. If the scene is too long, then we can use the trim feature and cut frames from the scene. Or if it's too short, we can add frames. This is especially valuable if you need to edit your video to change on the beat of music. We can even edit the video, audio channel 1 and channel 2 independently. Another feature of these machines is that after the edit points have been located, we can preview the proposed edit to be sure it is exactly what we want. If the edit points are correct, then we just push auto edit and the machine does the edit automatically. Also, after the edit is accomplished, we can review it to be sure the edit is correct and that the edit is a clean edit. As you can see, this system can keep editing time to a minimum and enable us to give you your instructional aid in a very timely and professional manner. The final step in the production process is the review and approval by the technical advisor. After the production is approved, we will then label the master tape and dub your copies. Television production will also conduct a review and critique to ensure that our standards have been met. This is done with the NCOIC and the director. Well, there you have it, an inside look at how a television production is accomplished. You've seen the pre-production phase, the paperwork, studio preparation, and rehearsal. We've shown you our equipment and how it can be used in the making of your production. And finally, you've seen how editing is done. Television production is a process that involves the use of complex equipment and coordination of a team of production specialists. A knowledge of the elements or tools of the process and how they work is essential. Knowing the tools and how the production team manipulates them for a specific communications purpose is what television production is all about. We in the television operations branch are all a part of that team and can offer you a quality video product that will rival the likes of any major production house around.